Let's get right to the point because I'm going to share some machine quilting designs for Starblocks. Hi, I'm Angela Walters from Quilting is My Therapy, and this is the Free Motion Challenge Quilting Along. Through this video series, I'm sharing some of my favorite designs for common quilt blocks, and in this video, we're going to be talking all about star blocks. I'm going to show you the perfect designs to make them sparkle. First up, let's talk about Lemoyne stars. This star is made up of diamond shapes, so any designs that you like to use in diamond shaped blocks will work. The first design we're going to talk through is a swirl hook. Since a diamond shape is wider in the middle and pointer at the top and bottom, much like myself, the swirl hook will fit that shape perfectly. I love the swirl hook design because it gives it a curvy, pointy look and really softens the points of that star. Starting from the center of the star, I'm going to quilt a swirl that ends in the widest point of the diamond. Once I get to the center, I'm going to work my way back around and extend that line out to the point. Once the foot of my machine starts to touch the edge of my block, I know it's time to stop. Then I'm going to echo my way back around that line I just quilted until I get to the swirl, and then echo around the outside of the swirl. And there I have my first swirl hook. What's nice is it brings me right back to the center so I can go into my next one. I'm going to extend that line until it goes all the way up to the point of that block, no matter how far I have to go to do that. And that's why we see how amazing this design is, because it goes out and it comes back. Now there's some different variations you can do with this design, especially if you're having trouble with it. So instead of echoing that hook back, when you get up to that point, you can just echo your way all the way back around the swirl and come back to the point. It's going to give it a slightly different look and it's one less thing that you have to think about. If you're having trouble with that hook, you can just leave it out. Quilt that swirl so it fills up as much of that block as possible, return to the starting point, and then just move on you're still gonna get that beautiful curvy look for your block. But let's say that you try it and you love it and you wanna use this design in different ways. One thing that you can do to create a different effect is to have them face each other. That's right, I want you to quilt it and then quilt the next one in the mirror image. That's a little tricky, I know. This will really help pull the blocks together and almost creates a little bit of a motif between the two designs. Or if you wanna show off, you can throw in two hooks. What it's gonna do is help fill in the space that's beneath the swirl, and that's gonna be really helpful when you're working with larger blocks. I'm gonna quilt the swirl the same. Instead of extending that line out towards the top point, I'm gonna extend that hook towards the bottom. Echo back to the swirl, then on around to make my next hook. Echoing the hook, and then back around the swirl to return to my starting point. This is really gonna help that design fill in bigger blocks. So if I have larger blocks, this might be what I would do. I just love how it gives it a beautiful, soft, curvy, little bit of a pointy look. It'll really enhance those star blocks. Now what's great about this design is that it can be used in any diamond shaped blocks. I mean, think of Lone Stars, think of Chevrons, any of those blocks where you need to fill it in and move on. So the next design that we're gonna see is gonna be the serpentine lines. It looks so good in these blocks. I'm gonna talk you through it. I promise it's not as hard as it seems. What I'm gonna do is quilt a line that comes along the seam, swings out and changes directions to merge into the other side. Once I hit the seam, I'm gonna travel along it just a bit and then echo my way right back down to the other side. Then I'm gonna echo the shape that I've just been quilting until I reach the end. Notice how it just has one change of direction. What I'm not doing is quilting a really wavy line. It should look like an elongated S or the side of a fern. I tend to think of it as an on-ramp, off-ramp. I'm gonna do the same thing in the next diamond, working my way back down towards the center of the star. So I'm actually quilting the points in groups of two. If you're having trouble with that serpentine line, I do have the quilting diagrams that you can download and trace over and that will really help make it easier. And there I have that beautiful, soft, serpentine line. And I'm back at the center so I can continue on to the next portion of my block. Okay, but let's talk about variations. If you're having trouble with that serpentine line, quilt a leaf shape in each of those points. Quilt a line that arcs out to a point and then back to the starting point. Once you have your little leaf, you can echo it until you get to the end of the point. It might be a little bit easier to quilt since most of us can visualize what a leaf shape looks like. However, if you want to draw the attention more to the outer point, 
you can put one big leaf in that diamond and then echo inside of it until the area is filled in, returning back to the center. A slightly different way to go about it, but it is going to give the quilting a different look. And don't worry if your leaf isn't perfectly symmetrical on both sides. We're just going for curvier in the middle and pointier on the ends. Now let's talk about star blocks that are more like an Ohio star. These quilt blocks usually have a different fabric in the center. If I love all the fabrics equally in the block, I'm gonna do a dot to dot variation in which I start from the center and quilt my diamond shaped wedges so they fill that block. It's also really gonna draw the eye to the center of the block. So if your piecing around the outside isn't perfect, this is gonna be a great way to um, kind of hide that. For this design, we're gonna use the center as one of our points as well as all the other points of the block. You can just eyeball the center point and get it as close as you can, or you can use a design with line stencil that'll help you find that middle quick and easily. Once you have that point marked, you're ready to get started. I'm gonna quilt a line straight up to the edge of the block, stopping about a quarter of an inch, then echoing the side of one of the points of my start. I'm gonna stop on the edge of my foot, touches both sides of the point. Then I'm gonna echo down the side of the point, stopping about a quarter of an inch away from my next point of the star. If I happen to be working on a star like this, I can use this seam as a guideline on where to stop. But if I don't have the seam, I can just eyeball it. Then I'm gonna quilt another straight line that goes back to the center of the block where I started. And that'll complete the first wedge of my design. My next line is gonna angle back up about a quarter of an inch from that point, echo the sides of my point, and then return back. The most important thing is that I fill up the block as much as possible with the diamonds. It really doesn't matter if they're all the same size or if they're a little wonky. Ultimately, we're just going for a geometric design that's really gonna make the block shine. At any time, if I'm not sure where to go next, I can stop, think through the next couple steps, maybe trace them out with my finger, and then continue on. There's no need to rush through it. But I promise, once you get the hang of how this design goes together, you'll be able to quilt all your star blocks quick and easily. Now all the lines coming to the center of this block is really gonna draw the eye to that area. But don't get stressed if they don't all meet perfectly in the center. Once you're done, it'll still look great. I'm working my way around the block in a clockwise manner. The only reason for that is it helps me keep on track on where to go next. You can go in the opposite direction, you can alternate the points, whatever it is that you wanna do. Now you might notice I'm keeping all my wedges about a quarter of an inch or so away from the edge of the block. That's because I don't want to lose the beautiful geometric look by running it into the seam accidentally. But why a quarter of an inch? I wish I could tell you there was a great scientific reason for it, but there's about a quarter of an inch space in between the needle and the edge of my foot. So once the foot runs into the seam of the block, I know it's time to change directions. You could definitely have more or less space between the blocks, depending on the look you're going for. And you'll know you're finished when you end where you started. But you might notice a problem. If I start in the center, that means I'm going to end in the center. If I want to continue on to the next block, I'm simply just going to quilt a straight line to the closest corner and then continue on. With so many straight lines in this design, it's not going to stand out. But if I love the fabric in the center a lot, I'm gonna do a different design in the center to really help frame it. There's a lot of different ways that you can highlight the center of the block, but I'm gonna show you one that I love to use on especially more focal prints. And it's a version of the square spiral in which we have these straight lines that kind of spiral into the center. I'm gonna start from any corner of the block and I'm gonna to look to the next corner and past it about an inch or a half inch or so. And I'm gonna quilt a straight line to that point. Then I'm going to do the same thing, looking to the next corner and past it by about an inch or so and quilt to that line as well. And I'm continue working my way around the block. Now I'm using a ruler because it helps me quilt these lines kind of straight. If you don't have one, what you can do is just tweak the quilt so that you're working more in a vertical or horizontal manner. Once I get back to the corner I started from, I'm going to stop when I hit that previously quilted line. I'm still going to look to the next corner and I'm going to go past it about a half inch or so, quilting until I touch that line. And I'm gonna do this another time around the block. A helpful thing to remember with this design is that none of the lines cross over. So as soon as I hit a previously quilted line, I know it's time to stop and change directions. And if I were to keep quilting those lines, I would eventually end up towards the center of my block. With a, but in this instance, I'm pretending that there's a focal fabric that I wanna feature. So I'm actually gonna stop at just a couple of rows and then transition into doing a filler in the middle. Now at this point, I would let whatever's in the fabric dictate what I was gonna quilt. For instance, if it was a focal print, I might just quilt along the lines of the design. But for now, I'm gonna quilt just a swirl meander to fill this in.
since I'm ending at the center, you might think that means I have to break thread to work on out, and that's not the case. I'm actually gonna fill the center, working my way to one of the corners, where I'll travel along my previously quilted line to get to the edge of the block. Now that I've got to the edge of my block, it's time to quilt the points of my star. And since I want the center to really be the focus, I'm just gonna incorporate a little bit of echoing in those points. But I'm not gonna echo every side because I wanna be able to maneuver my way around the block. Instead, I'm gonna echo the inside of the point just to help emphasize the shape. Depending on how big those points are, you could add more or less echo lines, but I'm gonna echo it at least one time, traveling along the seam of the block so I can get from point to point. And I'm gonna keep quilting my way around the block until I'm finished. And one final stitch around the seams and this block is done. Knowing how to use quilting to highlight parts of your quilt will help you show off the best parts while detracting attention from maybe parts that you don't love as much. Are you ready for your challenge? Go ahead and quilt the star blocks on your quilt with the designs of your choice. You can use the ones I've shown here, or you can come up with your own variations. Keep a lookout in the next couple days for a bonus video in which I share ideas for quilting the area around your star blocks. Don't forget, I have quilting diagrams in the description box below, as well as links to all the products that you've seen in the video. If you still have questions, you can check out fmqchallenge.com. That's a landing page for all the challenges I put together. Well, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next week when we talk about X-Blocks. Happy quilting.